Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And there's a couple of kind of general themes to be aware of this morning. There's one, one aspect that's kind of interesting, which is the bond yields in America versus the bond yields in Europe. And what we're seeing right now is just a little bit of divergence there where the yields in the US are that little bit higher and uh, the yields in, in, in Europe are a little bit lower. And as uh, Draghi's been going out and uh, commentators have been believing that they might be um, Kind of potentially going to negative rates. That's obviously reducing the yield on the on, on the bonds, and that means lots of investors from Europe are flooding into the American market. And what you're kind of seeing is the potential there for that divergence to go even further, where the yields in America uh, and the uh, and the yields in, uh, in, uh, in in Europe are just getting that little bit further away. And what that's causing is a, a little bit of a squeeze there in the value of um, of gold. And gold's always been a big hedge against inflation and uh, all that extra uh, kind of interest in US bonds is actually uh, increasing that inflationary danger. So that's why everybody's piling into gold right now. And when we look at gold from a technical perspective, it was in a kind of a triangle formation. It's just had a technical breakout there yesterday and um, it's looking very, very interesting for those traders who have a bit of a gold bug. Regardless if you're thinking about going long and short, it's, uh, it's one of the markets that's moving the most at the moment. In regards to oil related news, you had the Algerian oil minister kind of come out and say that there was going to be a potential secret meeting again, and they love these secret meetings right now, somewhere in Russia between OPEC and non OPEC members. Uh, and then a Russian oil minister came out and said, oh, no, that, that, that was never scheduled to happen. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but nevertheless, there's still lots and lots of stuff going on. The Algerian oil minister, uh, before he got qu quickly shut up, was kind of saying that the news that comes out of this meeting could have a big impact on oil prices, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's all just smoke and mirrors. Who knows? But that's the rumors that are sort of circling around in the markets. The last piece of fundamentals is really about Donald Trump. And the markets really just don't know what to do about this guy. Um, and now that most of the other Republican nominees are just fiercely attacking him, saying, you know, vote, vote for anyone else, just don't vote for him. Wall Street just doesn't understand what impact he's going to have should he remotely have any chance of getting in. With Hillary Clinton, as we discussed before, they've got a bit more of a cosy relationship. You know, she's given a lot of speeches and whatnot. There's a bit more of a known quantity. But Donald Trump, who knows what that guy would do if he ever got in. So um, that could add a little bit of extra volatility the closer we get to November. Obviously, depending if he gets the Republican nomination or not, it's so increasingly likely that he will. Uh, and then we have a Hillary uh, Trump uh, kind of battle to the finish. And that would be uh, interesting for everybody, I think. Uh, and um, the markets in, in that instance would certainly be a little bit unsure. So that's the kind of the current fundamentals that are kicking around right now. Let's have a look at things from a technical perspective. So as ever, I'd like to start off with the US 30, slowly grinding that little bit higher. Decent day yesterday, not a whole bunch of follow through this morning. We're edging closer to 70,038. 77% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. So they're anticipating that the closer we get to here, we might get a bit of a sell off right back down to here. Uh, but the markets are looking relatively resilient um, considering the technical indicators are not all overbought. The slow stochastic is, um, but it's not yet given a signal to sell. Moving quickly on to the UK 100, uh, not as strong performance as what we've had in the US, a bit anemic at the moment actually, perhaps slowly drifting down towards 60-70. Longer term potential resistance, 63.27. 70% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Slow stochastics flattening out, edging slightly lower. Our, uh, the uh, the uh, MACD uh, histogram slowly grinding lower as well. This looks a little bit weaker, especially if we get a sell off in the commodities. Um, looking at Japan 225, looking a little bit more healthy, 53% of CMC market clients currently long, almost 50-50, slowly edging up here, breaking above 16,896. Next potential resistance once we get past this 55 period SMA, 17,658. Then moving on to dollar yen, not really doing a huge amount. These candles here are indicative, indicative of the fact that it's selling interest. Just every, each time we try and push on that little bit higher, sell off, push on higher, sell off. So we're actually making a series of lower highs right now and we're hugging that 21 period SMA. Not a much to get excited about. Moving on to crude oil, West Texas, still moving up a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, we have doji formation last night, not a lot of follow through today. 82% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Uh, and you can see each time it tries to push up, it gets, uh, it gets pushed back down again, but it is slowly grinding higher. Then moving on to gold, technical breakout. You can see that a little bit clearer yesterday, a real push on higher. It actually broke above the high right here, only to close a little bit on the right side. Next potential resistance is at 13.07. Any retreat, we might hit this uh, sloping trend line as a potential support. 
Finishing up there with uh, Euro dollar and GBP USD. Euro had a big day yesterday, uh, cap, uh, potentially capped at 55 period SMA, still trading between two ranges, one spot 0A and one spot 11. And then finishing up with GBP USD, uh, the, the, the sterling finally getting its, uh, its act together and moving on that little bit higher as well. Trading between two ranges, one spot 42.28 and one spot 41.29. Uh, and that is you know, three, four different, four days of gains, which I don't think we've actually seen on GBP for quite some time. So that gives you a bit of a flavor. And uh, obviously today comes with it, non-farm payrolls. Make sure you guys don't forget about that. That's a big one, forecast 190, previous before was 151, missed expectations. Will it smash it this time? Well, you have to tune in later on to find out. Well, that's it for me, guys. Join me again uh, next week, actually. I'm away on holiday, so I won't be back until the week after. So hopefully the markets treat you well. And join me again a week on Monday, and we'll see you then. Take care, thanks a lot, and goodbye.